Right, hello. So today I'm going to talk about pigs. So buckle up, because it's boring time. <laughs> now there's a lot of things to talk about when it comes to pigs. And, and people don't talk about pigs as much as I think they should, because I guess most people aren't huge nerds, but I am, and I will. So, um, just in case you think uh, I don't know my shit when it comes to pigs, I have a pick collection. I know that's the most virgin sentence anyone has ever said <laughs> out loud, but I have a pick collection. This isn't the half of it. This is just what we're going to be focusing on today and what I occasionally will reach for if I'm going for a different sound or feel, but mostly I stick to one brand. I'll get to that in a second. So behind this amplifier, I have an array of plectrums that I'm going to show you one by one. I'll give you some sound samples. And I'm going to prove to you that picks, while they're not as important as, say, the pedals, pickups, amp, speakers you're using, they do affect tone. They're last in line right along with tone wood, but they are significant to some people like me. And again, nerd video, boring video, let's get started. I'll start with the good. You'll notice that this is a very short segment. <laughs> so, starting off with the picks that I use myself, mainly, Swiss picks. Now, Swiss Picks is a small company run by one dude, actually. His name's Pete. Customer service, first of all, is impeccable. I've tried asking Dunlop and all those people my nerd questions. No one responded, uh, so I don't give a shit anymore. Pete's the man. He makes the best picks in the world. Uh, these are jazz picks. I've been on the jazz pick train, personally, for about a year and a half, maybe two years now, and I'm not looking to go back. I love jazz picks, however Swiss picks do make normal sized ones, I'm just, I'm not a fan of those. Uh, this is the 1.3mm Jason Becker Tribute series and I love these to death. Now, before I discovered Swiss picks, I was using these Alice jazz picks. Now I got these in bulk lots of 50 uh, on AliExpress for like 2 or 3 euro each time and I have to say, I was quite satisfied with them, right, the sound, the feel, everything was great. But while they do look like they have a significant like grip area, they just don't. You strum too hard and they're, they're flying off. So I got very frustrated with them at some point and I just, I just felt the need to make a change, which is when I discovered Swiss Picks. But, you know, these were the most accessible and I guess for the time being, they were enough. Now let's move on to the bad. This is where it gets a little fun. Before I became a jazz pick guy, I was using these. Now, uh, a close-up of these will show you that they are three millimeters thick and fucking just behemoths. Now, I know that companies like Purple Plectrums make those insane like three centimeter picks that you just hold like this, and I, I don't, I'm not a fan of those. Uh, I get that there are some advantages, especially for people who don't pick with their fingers or their wrists, but their arm, you know, which I do quite a lot if I'm speed picking, but these were just too much weight for everyday use, if that makes sense. Like, if I compare this to a Swiss pick, it, it weighs significantly fucking more. And while that may not be significant in the grand scheme of things, it does make quite a bit of a difference if you're trying to pick fast. So, uh, these weren't my weapon of choice for a long time. Up next, these are obviously quite popular, but Dunlop Jazz 3s. I was never a fan of these. Uh, I tried these before I went to the Dunlop Big Stubby Picks and that's originally what turned me off to jazz picks because they just, I don't know, they rub me the wrong way. First of all, again, I play fast and I play a lot. So these picks just kind of melted in my hand and, and they're, they're too flexible. They don't flop around while you're playing. They're just not they're just not what I like to use. I don't know, I've since tried the Kirk Hammett signature ones, the John Petrucci signature ones. I've tried all of the Jazz 3s in existence, and to this day, they're just what, some of my least favorite picks in the world. I, I don't like them. So following the Jazz 3 train, I found two of these picks in the spare sort of random pick spin at a guitar store once, and this is the one that I never used. Uh, these feel similar to Jazz 3s, except they're very soft and feel sort of rubberized on the outside, and that just gives them amazing grip. However, the entire pick is made of this material, and that just causes them to melt in your hand, literally, as you play. The one that I used lasted me a day and a half until it was just like half of it. I don't know if these are supposed to be ukulele picks, I don't think they are, but yeah. 
I, I kept this one because I knew that if I used it, it would be gone within a day. And I, I just, I kept this as a showcase thing. Don't buy picks that feel like this. It's not good for picking. <laughs> Up next, uh, Ibanez picks. Uh, now, I've tried pretty much every Ibanez pick that there is. Uh, here's the classic sort of medium picks. Uh, these aren't much different from any, like, Dunlop Tortex or whatever. It's just your everyday random guitar store tray pick. But... I, I never like these, uh, especially because the mediums are just, they're too floppy. They're not a play fast kind of pick, but I'm not a full sized pick guy anyway. I should put up a counter for, for how many times I've said pick in this video, but that, that'd be too much work. <laughs> God. And uh, here's the Ibanez Elastoma picks. Now, the name does suggest that these are elastic or in other words, just floppy as shit. And that's exactly what they are. 1.2 millimeters thick and not usable for anything that isn't clean guitar or strumming. It's just out of my life. And next up uh, is this thing. Now, I found this and a transparent version of this at a guitar store in that same bin, I think the same day. And it's the same brand as that disgusting rubberized pick. Um, 0.5 millimeters, that is certainly something, and it's fucking huge, it, it, it's colossal, and if it's, it's, it's a pick that huge and that thin, you can just imagine the sheer flex while playing. It is no good, and I don't enjoy it, uh, I don't enjoy the size either, again, I'm a, I use jazz picks, right, as small as possible, this is the exact opposite, it's just, it's too big. I don't know, maybe for acoustic strumming I should give that a try if I ever do get an acoustic guitar, but as of right now, I don't like these. Out. Now, these are just the classic picks that y you know these because you can get them at any guitar store. Now, these two particular ones uh, are branded by two people whom I actually quite like. This first one is a Jamie Slay's branded Ernie Ball pick. So I got that and a bunch of other case candy when I bought his Tube Screamer off him. Yeah, Jamie's the nicest guy ever, I'll link his channel in the description because I mentioned him. Yeah, these picks are no good though. <laughs> I mean, I think he knows that because he doesn't use them. These are just kind of throw into the audience on stage picks or, you know, stuff to put in a package when you sell something. This isn't what you actually use. And the second one is a Mentalist branded pick. Mentalist is a German power metal band and they're great guys, they're lead guitarists I'm very well acquainted with, let's say that. Uh, and he gave me this pick. And again, this is a pick to use to like throw off the stage into the audience and whatever. But in order to do that, you have to be playing it. And that is no good. So, goodbye. Alright, now let's get into the real, real crummy territory, shall we? Um, metal picks. Whose idea was it to make a metal guitar pick? Now, I know that there may be some appeal to a metal guitar pick at first in your head because it won't wear out. It's, it'll last you forever, pretty much. However, whoever made these picks, whoever S and B are, they didn't take into consideration the fact that strings are made of metal and that pickups are magnets. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can imagine what this sounds like. I'll show you anyway. <laughs> away with you. Ouch. Next one! Again, this is just sort of a guitar store find that I found quite interesting. It is very oddly shaped and it is so thin. Again, this says 0.5 millimeters. It doesn't feel like that much. It feels like nothing. It's incredibly floppy and it's awkward as hell to use because it's shaped like an arrow and that's not how you shape picks. But, you know, what do I know? I'm just a guitar player. Up next, and these are my favorites out of the 
awful lot, I'll be honest, are these picks, which about three years ago I got, I think it was 60 of, for two cents and free shipping on Amazon. 60 picks, two cents, free shipping. <laughs> think about that. And once I got them, I'm not gonna lie, I realized why they didn't cost anything. You just saw a couple 0.5 millimeter picks. This is not even 0.5. In fact, I'd be hesitant to say that this is even 0.2. This is just, I can feel that it's plastic, but it feels like paper. And, you know, oh, yeah, just, just doing that, it just, it just broke in my hand. Yep, you know what, just, just screw, fuck off, all right? If you strum or pick too hard, these, these just actually break. <laughs> so, yeah, have a listen. I'll play you some fucking brutal riffs and see how long this thing lasts. <laughs> It didn't, so good night. Yeah, I mean, I, I actually put tape on one of these and wrote dick on it, and that's the dick pick now. Uh, I can't use this because it's, it's unusable, but it's, that's the funny pick now. So, um, yeah, again, good night. So, now that you've pretty much heard all these significant picks that I own, I'll play you all of them. So you can see for yourself that these do sound different. They don't make your sound better or worse, per se, they just they just change it. They change the frequency response a little bit, it's just... It's different, but I couldn't say which one I prefer sound-wise. I go off a of feel as far as picks go, I'm just saying, they do affect sound. And people who say that they don't should stop listening with their eyes just because they can't see a difference. Now I'm gonna use the same amp settings, pedal settings, and guitar for all of these. I'm gonna try to make my pick attack as uniform as possible across all of these. And I hope that through YouTube's compression you will still be able to hear a difference. I have confidence in that. So, enjoy. Right, so I was certainly able to hear a difference. Um, again, I hope you were as well. If so, then I guess this video wasn't for nothing. Uh, I also hope it wasn't too boring. I actually find this topic quite interesting. I can totally understand if you don't though. <laughs> because this is real nerd shit and I'll try to make some more generally entertaining videos in the future. But yeah, this was just sort of a thing that's been on my mind for a while, so I wanted to share it. Um, since this is my second video on this channel, I can actually put up a link to the last one right here if you haven't seen that yet. And you can subscribe somewhere over there if you feel like it. I'll see you in the next video, I hope.